the South Carolina Gamecocks. You want to talk about a team that has got some hype right now. South Carolina, uh, this bunch, here, let me scroll up here. Uh, Shane Beamer, I mean, just outperformed everybody's expectations last year. I think their win total was three and a half last year. Uh, they went seven and six with a bowl win over North Carolina. Not bad. You got you got wins in the regular season over Auburn and Florida. I don't think anybody saw that happening. But regardless, here we are, uh, seven and six last year. They've got seventy percent returning production. That's number forty in the country. Uh, they've got the number ten roster strength in the country per CFB Winning Edge. Number five on offense. Now, if you watched that offense last year, you would have never believed that this is the tenth, or excuse me, the fifth highest rated offense as far as roster strength in the country. But that's what they were able to do in the transfer portal. Um, offensive PPA per drive last year was number 92. Defense was number 50. So the defense ruled the day last year. Offense, I think, will be it this year. We will talk about that side of the ball here. Uh, Marcus Satterfield, in second year, he was Mar uh, Matt Rule's offense coordinator at Temple. Then he spent some time in the NFL, et cetera. No idea what to expect here. Uh, all the prior numbers make no sense at all when you look at who they've got here. Quarterback Spencer Rattler, massive upgrade. News out of camp is he has been flinging it, man. Uh, brought in two talented transfer running backs to pair along with Marshawn Lloyd. The tight end, Jaheim Bell, was an absolute beast last year. He's back along with the wide receiver, Josh Van. You bring in the wide receivers, Rucker and Wells from Arkansas State and James Madison. You got the tight end, Stogner, coming in from Oklahoma to pair along with Spencer Rattler. The offensive line is loaded. Uh, can the six transfers gel? Like, that's the question, really. And you would have to imagine that they will at some point. Can they do it early? Because that early schedule, Georgia State, they were they were on fire to in last season. Along with that, at Arkansas, again, team that was on fire at the end of last season, another team that's really, really good, and you're going into a buzzsaw in week two there. Georgia in week three, like, these are difficult games at the very beginning of the season. Even if you lose those, you start to gel once you get towards the uh, the middle of the year. You get done with South Carolina State, and then you have to go play at Kentucky. You get a bye week, and then you get Texas A&M. I mean, it's a brutal, brutal schedule. Uh, but I got a lot of love here. Uh, I'll say that. We'll move over to the defensive side of the ball. Clayton White, in his second year, he led great defenses for Western Kentucky uh, and was really the reason why uh, uh, Tyson Helton, I think that's his name, Tyson Summers, Cameron Tyson Helton, whoever it is that's in Western Kentucky right now. I swear to God, I know this name. Uh, he, he basically saved his job because Clayton White is the one that led that first defense that was really, really good for him. So uh, defense number 97 in PPA per rush, but they were number 28 in PPA per pass. So that secondary was awesome. They were pretty good at getting stops. They were number 32 in points per scoring opportunity. The back seven returns a lot, so obviously that's good because that was the strongest side of the ball last year. Uh, the only two defensive tracker uh, transfers were a cornerback and defensive end, but they can both play immediately. Defensive line has got six guys that had 135-plus snaps back. Only Zach Pickens was the starter here. Um, it's it, This is questionable, right? Uh, the defense, you got some questions here. If the offense can gel, maybe take a little bit of pressure off that defense, I think you can expect some really, really good things here. Now, uh, they're projected favorites in only five games. They have six toss-ups. Again, toss-ups are one-possession projected finals. Uh, the win total sits at six and a half. The over is juiced at plus 110, the under minus 140. So it is juiced more to the under here. Um, but man, I'm not going to lie. I have bought in on this hype. I have bought in on the Gamecocks. Uh, I think culture matters in college football. We saw it with Arkansas last year. Right, I think culture matters. There will be some of these games that are pretty close that I think that they're going to win just because their team likes to be around each other. They gel consistently, etc. Uh, the keys to the season here. Talent all over the offense, but can it gel? Can it be cohesive? Spencer Rattler has some serious weapons at running back, tight end, wide receiver, and the offensive line looks loaded too. Uh, that's the question. Can the offense gel? Can the defense stop the run? That's the other question. I just brought up that PPA per rush number, number 97 last year. Secondary, not a question here. Uh, we're good last year. they got serious talent, but you need the defensive line and linebackers to improve in year two. Beamer, really building something here. Like, really building something. If the transfer talent can come together, this could seriously be a team to look out for. I've got them going 8-4. and four. I've got them going 8-4. and four. The losses, uh, Texas A&M, Georgia, at Arkansas, and at Clemson. Those are the four losses. I think they beat everybody else on the schedule. 
we will see. Obviously, this is going out on a limb, um, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Hopefully, you guys are as well, uh, because I think I think what Shane Beamer is doing here is pretty good. He has figured out that you don't necessarily have to be able to recruit the kids out of high school. You can go and get the kids that maybe are really talented but don't like their situations elsewhere in college football. Beamer is the perfect guy for that, and the culture he's building in Columbia is phenomenal. For sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.